Alright everyone, it's been a while since I've done one of these just because I haven't had anything interesting enough in my opinion or just a time really to do one of these. So today we're going to fix a Game Boy Pocket that is not powering on. And it actually has a battery door for one, but there is some corrosion on the contacts down in here, but that is not the issue. I've plugged it in with a AC adapter and I've even powered the battery terminals with a bench power supply and I'm not getting any life out of it. So I'll just pop these in to show it's not doing anything. Spin the contrast knob. Still nothing. So it's dead. So let's get it apart. And I will go ahead and say I have already diagnosed this. It's also already got almost all the screws taken out. I just... There we go. I just have two of them in just for the sake of holding it together for the intro. Come on. Normally there'd be six of these tri-wing screws. Two here, two here, and two here. So no big deal to get apart. Go. Free, free the battery terminals. Pop that screw out. Okay. So what I believe to be the issue is zoom in real quick. I believe the issue is is this fuse right here. Uh, now I know it doesn't look like a fuse, it very much looks like it's a resistor, because it is. But if we look closely, it's labeled as F1 for fuse. They used a 1 ohm quarter watt resistor as a fuse on this. So, to replace it, I have a bag full of 1 ohm quarter watt resistors. Ah, there we go. Right here. One ohm, quarter watt. So, a little bit. Need to pop out the circuit board, which to do that, there are three regular Phillips screws. Just take those out. Now, I don't know if there's anything else with this console. Obviously, I haven't gotten any power into it yet. I I mean, I guess I could have powered it across the fuse on the uh, rest, the other side of the fuse where the power needs to be, but I didn't feel like doing that because that just seems like a bad idea. Pop the ribbon connector at the top here out. So as far as I can tell from looking, oops, there's a sort and select. As far as I can tell from looking at it, the screen doesn't look busted in any way, but we'll see how it actually looks when I get this thing working. Okay. So, fuse is here. It's a little bit of a more annoying more of an annoyance than I'd like to get to because there's it's there's this board in the way, but I can probably get that no problem. I'm just gonna do that off camera because I'm still not good at soldering with the camera in the way. So I'm gonna get that fuse replaced and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, so take a look here. I did get that resistor replaced with a new one ohm resistor. It uh, was really straightforward. I mean, two solder point, two solder points, and put the new one in. So let's get this thing back together and we'll see if it works. So we'll just oh. Okay, so let's get this thing back together and see if it works. So we'll just pop this ribbon for the display back in, which is pretty easy compared to some of the newer ZIF connectors out there. Okay, so screws are back in. We'll just pop the back cover back on. And if it doesn't work this time, I'm going to guess it's this. The uh, battery corrosion. I can put any screws in because I'm just doing a quick test here. Make sure that's not an issue. All right.
Ah, there we go. So let me go find a game and we'll try this out. Okay, so I got the only game I could find. I actually don't know what this game is. It's just something I got out of a lot of games one time and it wasn't worth the sell. All my Game Boy games are in my bedroom, but my wife is asleep, so I'm not going to go wake her up just to get a game that I know is good. So, we'll just pop that in. Let's see what we got. What we've got is a garbled mess, which means either have a dirty game or a dirty cartridge slot. It could be either one. Because I've never used this game cartridge before, so... There we go. That's working better now. Good sound. Now, I don't hear any sound. Contrast knob works. Okay, so we've got... Sounds like no sound. Um, do I have any headphones out here? I don't have any headphones to try the headphone port jack on here with, so I will go find some of those real quick and we'll see what we can do with that. Okay, so I rummaged around in my work bag and was able to find a pair of earbuds, so I'm going to plug this into here. Have a good click, so that's a good sign potentially. Throw in the head, throw in my headphones, and okay, so there's audio coming out of the headphones, but no audio coming out of the speaker. Okay. Well, that could be a couple of things. Uh, there could actually be a pen bent in here that's keeping the audio always on. Or the speaker's bad, broken trace, it could be a lot of things. But I wasn't expecting when I first diagnosed this thing because I was not expecting it to... I, I can't, obviously can't really do a lot of the diagnosing diagnoses unless it actually powers on. So let's take this back off. Okay, so I need to get this whole board out again. Okay, so I've got the board back out again. And initial inspection-wise, there's nothing wrong with these solder joints on the speaker, which is to be expected, I guess. But if you look at the headphone jack, it does have some crud all over it, but if you look inside, it doesn't look like the pins are bent into positions they shouldn't be, and it just looks like they're really dirty. So, first thing to do, in my opinion, is get my multimeter out. I'm going to measure the resistance of the speaker because I should get a resistance off of that, if I, or a resistance value when I... Okay, should be in resistance mode now. Let's see if I can... Is that, is that better if I... it's not better. Okay, I'm trying to set this so y'all can see it better. Okay, so... Take our probes and check the resistance across here. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that the speaker is not broken. There is obviously no sign of a broken wire in there. So then, from my experiences, that narrows it down to a couple of things. That could be the headphone jack is just corroded too much and it's stuck in headphone mode. Could be that pin's bent more than I think it is. Or, and looking at this board, it's highly unlikely, some capacitor or something is bad. I really don't think that's what it is though, I think it's the headphone jack. I don't actually have an extra one to test that with, though, so I'd either have to buy another one. Um, hmm. I'm gonna look around real quick and see if I can figure something out about that. Because, uh, like I said, usually the times I've done the, I've had no idea it was either a very obviously broken speaker, 
or a very obvious uh, like pin that was stuck in here too far and wouldn't come down at all. So I'm gonna do some uh, more diagnosing and searching online, and I'll come back to you with what I find. Okay, so I did some more diagnosing, and I'm pretty sure I figured out what the problem is, but I can't be certain until I try this. So I measured the resistance of this speaker here, and it was coming out to be about 8 ohms, like all of the replacements online, whereas this one, as you saw previously, was reading the kilo ohms. So I think the speaker is the problem, not anything else. So I'm going to swap the speaker off of this Game Boy Color onto this Game Boy Pocket, because they use the exact same speaker. So let's do that real quick. Clean my soldering iron off a little bit. And I'm just going to do this the fast, easy way. I'm just going to take the... Should have gotten some tweezers for this. Oh, the screwdriver should work. I'm just going to take the speaker off. And swap the speaker. That's all I'm going to do. So that's a good speaker. Remember the good speaker has the black on the back. Be a lot easier if I was any good at soldering on camera. Attach the wires to the new, well, to the good speaker. Mm, that's good enough for testing. Okay, so this needs to get put back into the Game Boy Pocket shell. Now that's back together, we're going, well, back together enough, we're going to pop our game in throw in a pair of AAA batteries, flip it over, adjust the contrast, and still no audio. Okay, so I've got it back together now, so what happened, I'm pretty sure, is I'd forgotten to resolder the headphone jack from when I was testing it earlier, and that has to be plugged, that has to be soldered in for it to actually pass sound to the speaker because of the switch that's in there. So if we turn it on now, we have audio. Uh, it, yeah, it works now, so all I have to do is clean the corrosion off the battery terminals, but I'll do that off camera because I'm just gonna hit it with some like Scotch Brite had in the kitchen and that's really not exciting. Main takeaway is blown fuse and a bad speaker is always wrong with this thing. And now it works. So with all that done, I guess maybe I'll mod it and put a better screen in here. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll do one of those audio mods. I don't know. I might just sell it. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't decided yet. Uh, but anyway, I will see y'all in the next video. Hopefully it'll be soon. Hopefully parts will get here so that I can actually keep making more videos regularly rather than start one and wait for parts and never get done like I've done for like three videos now. But I'm rambling, so I will see y'all next time. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, share, do all that stuff everyone tells you to do at the end of the videos, so... See you next time.